Club. Zuby friends, welcome back to the channel. So guess what we got today? It's a new driver mod. So excited, we got to do this. So this is an inexpensive mod that I've been looking at for quite a while. And not only is it inexpensive, but it's super easy. And that means you can do it too. Yep, and it's gonna go right there. You know what? I got it set up over here. Follow me. So what we're gonna be installing today is the Parents Master Cylinder Brace for the WRX STI. Why? You can read the brochure. So what you get in the box, you get your paperwork, you get your cool stickers, as well as all your hardware, the install tools, and the brace itself. And after doing some research online, I found that this is the most beefiest and well-made brace for your master cylinder that I have found. That's in my opinion anyway. You also get this nice looking box with the part number on the back side of it. And you know what? I'm kind of starting to think that Perrin and Cobb shop at the same box store. Now, in case you might be thinking, what's the point of this master cylinder brace? Well, let's have a look. All right, let's hop in the car. Wait, we're in the car. Let's pump the brakes a few times and you can see that master cylinder moving a little bit. What? Here's another look with some better light. Now also, in case you might be thinking, well hey, I don't track my car. I don't really go on spirited drives. Well you know what, me either. But, every once in a while, well I do do those canyon drives. And maybe one day, when you're on the freeway, stuck in traffic or not, some random person might slam on the brakes in front of you and you may need to hit those brakes. Wouldn't it be good reassurance that your car is gonna do what you tell it to do and not hope it does what you want it to do? That's pretty good. You should write that down. All right, before we get started prepping our brace, I thought I'd show you where exactly this is gonna go because that might be a little bit useful. So if you look on your strut tower, right below the fuel pressure regulator, you'll see three holes right down there. It's kind of hard to see, but they're there. There they are. Well, that's our main mounting point. Now, according to our instructions, the first thing we wanna do is remove the stainless steel set screw that we're gonna be reinstalling again later on. I have a feeling I might drop this later on. There. All right, we're done with our install. Peace out. I know, seems really simple, right? Right? Right. Right. <laughs> right. All right, just as usual, typical Subaru fashion, there's absolutely no room to work. So we are going to do the best we can to show you what we got. I don't know if that part makes sense. All right, I think first off, I'm going to try and remove our fuel pressure regulator. Just push it off to the side a little bit. Does that mean cool music and time lapse? No, because I'm only going to try to undo this clamp right here. Oh. First we need to get our brace into place. Yeah, I know that rhymes. Somehow. Maybe the big beefy part wasn't the bestest idea. But you know, we didn't go to... We didn't go to the moon because it was easy.
All right, quick tip. You know what is actually easier to do this from underneath of the car instead of doing it from the top? Because you got a lot more room to get your hands in there. Actually, it is a lot easier to get at least one of the bolts in from the top of the car. That way, while you're under the car, you already have the bracket in place. That way you can reach up there with one hand and get those other two bolts in. But it is a pain in the butt, so just be ready for that. This is where having the quarter ends ratchet came in handy. It was just small enough to reach in there with a few extensions so that I can tighten the bolts. Alright, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Alright, we got those two screws, three screws in there, loosely fitted. And now we gotta do that one last button head screw that goes right behind the wheel. It was also a lot easier to do that from underneath of the car than it was to get it from above the car. You just had a lot more room to work. But at the end, I'll show you all the tools that I needed. All right, next up is a washer, as well as this button head screw. And these are gonna go right into this hole right here. And I'm hoping that I don't have to take off this tire. If you look right here, right there, right there, that is the hole that we are gonna aim for. And we're gonna do the tape method. It's a bunch of extensions. Alright, check it out. Yep, little tape. And let's go. Extensions didn't work. But we might as well do it right. That means we don't need shortcuts. Alright, we got our button head screw in there. Now we just gotta tighten it down to 20 foot pounds. Cool. Done. Now we just gotta go back underneath of the car and tighten the other three to 10 foot pounds. I don't have a torque wrench small enough, so I'm just gonna guesstimate. All right, so the reason that I had to stop and take the tire off and do it right was because if you look right here, it looks like it was going a little bit cross-threaded. So we're going to take that off, sorry, and do it correctly. Put a little bit of Loctite blue on these threads that are sticking out right here, here, and here. A little bit of Loctite blue, that way they don't vibrate loose. And we're all done here, just got one last step to do. Alright, now we got one last thing to do, which is insert our set screw, which looks like this, as well as the locking nut. And look, there's something else in the way. I swear this car. One, two is a half, one more. All right, we got that three quarters. We take our locking nut. Try not to drop you, you feel slippery. Feeling I might drop this later on.
video I said this is going to be an easy install. Well, I don't know about that. I retract my previous statement. I mean, yeah, it was kind of easy and it would be easy, but you know, in typical Subaru fashion, these cars do not like to be worked on. Everything fights you as well as there is very, very little space. Think of the spark plugs. Yeah, it's just like that. But hey, we got it done. Let's see how good it works. All right, let's give it a few pumps and see what happens. One more time. Oh, wow, it does feel a little bit stiffer. Maybe I should start the car and see what happens. Yeah. All right, let's give it a quick test with the car on. Hope I didn't leave anything under there. All right, let's do a few brake pumps. Yeah, feels good. All right. All right, I say that would be a wrap. I mean, we are done with this install. You know what? Let me do a quick cleanup of this giant mess and I'll show you all the tools that I used. Be right back. All right, here's all the tools that we used for this job. The two hex keys that came with the kit, didn't really use those much. Instead, we used a 3 16th hex key socket. We had two pretty long extensions. A quarter inch ratchet. Half inch ratchet. Torque wrench. 19 millimeter socket. Some big to littlers, as well as little to bigs. A two inch extension and a four inch extension. A wobbly do. Both quarter inch. Alright, to be friends, that's a wrap on this one. I think right now I'm gonna go check out this cars and coffee that they're having down the street. Alright, you guys, that was kind of cool. It was actually a lot cooler than I thought it was gonna be. Met a lot of cool people, saw a lot of cool cars. But alright, you guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here. Stay tuned for some more STI content, like when we install this cool throttle body, throttle body, throttle pedal spacer. So yeah, stay tuned for some more STI content. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, peace. So this is an inexpensive mod that I've been looking at for quite a while. Expensive, but it's super easy. So that means it's inexpensive. I'm send it backwards. Ah. Ah. The second part of this test involves you. If you have been correctly installed as part of your stereo system, you will now lift the record up, turn it over, and replace it on the turntable with side two on the top. You will then proceed to listen to all of side two. If you do not do this, you have failed the test, and you have the worst hi-fi system in the world no matter how much money you spent.